director and it is my absolute honor to introduce to the stage Dr. Gyanvatsal Swami. Can I request you to put your hands together and give a very warm welcome for a special session to Dr. Gyanvatsal Swami. Can I request uh, Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani to also join us on the dais? Uh, Swamiji, we request you to please Take the podium and start the session whenever you're ready, sir. Thank you. Thank you. गुणातीतोक्षरं ब्रह्मा भगवान् पुरुषोत्तमः जनो जाननिदं सत्यं मुच्छते भवा बंधनात् With prostrations at the divine feet of भगवान् स्वामी नारायण, my Guru Hari, परम पूज्य प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज, and my प्रगट Guru Hari, परम पूज्य महंत स्वामी महाराज, my heartiest नमस्कार Jaisi Krishna, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Swami Narayan, and a very good evening. Nice to be with the youngsters, and especially when it's a very special next gen program. First of all, from the bottom of my heart, I thank the organizers of this Naradko next gen program. Especially to our, my very good friend and a BAPS devotee, Shri Manoj Bhai Ajmera, who has been instrumental in bringing us together. And it was a nice pre-event sitting with an elder of your industry and years of relationship, Shri Niranjan Bhai Hiranandani. <clears throat> and all, I appreciate your presence today. Well, the topic shared with me today is positivity in adversity. And probably the first question that could come in your mind is, what would be a saint doing in the midst of all real estate people? Because you being... <coughs> Entirely in the 24-7-365 commercial activity. And we are into 24-7-365 into an NGO doing social services. So probably the first question you could get in mind is, what a saint who has never done, <clears throat> sorry, any commercial activity in his life, to the extent that I don't even charge a single penny for my talks. I've been talking since 25 years on national and international platforms. I don't charge a single penny. I haven't charged a single penny coming here as well. So not done any commercial activity in my life. And so the question could naturally arise in your mind that what would he be talking to us? And the fields are absolutely different. 
But I read a book during the Corona times. The title of the book is Trillion Dollar Coach, which I recommend all of you youngsters, especially when you have stepped into your family businesses and creating inroads into the industry. The Trillion Dollar Coach, <coughs> in this book, many of them have shared their experiences, especially the IT people who have been trained by a footballer. The footballer and football coach Bill Campbell has trained top class executives of the IT industry at Silicon Valley in California, US. You'd be surprised to know that Bill Campbell has coached Larry Page, Google's owner. A footballer has coached IT executive, IT company's owner. <clears throat> He has coached Eric Smith, again, uh, vice president products of Google. Bill Campbell has also coached one Mr. Jonathan Rosenberg, who is also a very senior IT executive with a giant company there. So the question again arises in your mind is like, how would a footballer, how can a footballer and a football coach train IT executives? Absolutely 180 degree diagonally opposite fields, football and IT. But this book, Trillion Dollar Coach, explains what exactly this phenomenon is. And what these people as IT executives gain from a footballer. Eric Smith writes that I got convinced that to train a person, to coach a person, you don't need to know the policies and strategies of the company. Now this is shocking. Secondly, says to train a coach, the trainer doesn't need to know the products of that company. And now the third sentence is like a fire on your chest, all of you people. Eric Smith says that to train a person for the trainer and the coach, he doesn't know to need, doesn't need to know the sales and the marketing strategies of the company. Now, if the coach doesn't need to know the policies and strategies of the company, he doesn't need to know the product of the company, he doesn't know to need, doesn't need to know the sales and the marketing strategy of the company, how will he coach? But this trillion dollar coach book, which, has, which was listed on the New York Times bestsellers list, for 60 months it remained at the top which is a world record in itself, says that Bill Campbell used to teach only one thing, that to grow a company, to put your product in a well-placed position in the market, the only thing required is to know the dynamics of the people working together as a team. That's it. In a team when people have come together to work, how well they have accepted each other in the team. How well they know each other. How well they can accept each other's discrepancies or negatives. How well they have decided to be together for a longer time to produce result. Only that matters and if you can, have a distinction percentage in this particular aspect, product selling, marketing, sales, everything is a byproduct of this. It will naturally come good. The human element is important than the machine element. Agree or not? The human element, the human factor is more important than the hardware or the software factor. Agree or not? Because at the end of the day, you are dealing with people. So in one line, this trillion dollar coach book teaches that to grow yourself, to grow your business, you need to have good dynamics with the people that you are working with. This is what Harvard University suggests after their study in more than 110 countries, across five continents, across caste, creed, color. The basic question was, 
which one factor plays a principal role in the growth of the profession, that is growth of business. More than 90% of the respondents, they said, and this is well revealed in the Harvard study, that 90% of your business depends upon your human relations with people. 90% of your business depends upon your human relations with people that you can accumulate people, gather people to convey your ideology, to convey your project, to convey your future plans. And your human relations, if they are strong, you can fall governments. And if your human relations are weak, you fall as a head of the state as well. <laughs> Everything depends upon human relations. Meeting more people, just sitting with them, just listening to them, is human relations. That is the start of it. At the end of the day, the survey says people are more concerned with the human relations that you keep with them instead of the ideologies that you enforce upon them. Simple. So 90% of your business depends, the success of your business depends upon your human relations with people. And that we saw in the last 48 hours. 90% of your business depends upon your human relations with people. So what I mean to say is, if a footballer can coach IT people, we as saints, we are in the midst of society. I have traveled to more than 30 countries, personally sat with more than 25,000 families across caste, creed, color, religion. And this is perhaps more than my 15,000th talk in the midst of people. So I can well talk to you about positivity and adversity. Because I'm not here to teach you sales and marketing, which is your vision. Next gen, accelerate, sales and marketing. Sales and marketing, I don't have to learn for sales and marketing, because it's not my domain. But the foundation of sales and marketing is the same thing. I will learn that. And that is human relations. People should trust you. You should trust people. People must love you. You must love people. You must find time for people. People should be finding time for you. As simple as that. All sales and marketing depends upon human relations, isn't it? Do you 100% agree with me? Just raise your hands. All sales and marketing depends upon human relations with people. And 90% of your business is dependent upon human relations. That is what Harvard University says. So adjust yourself well in human relations. That is the most important factor. On a fine Sunday morning, I'm just reminded of a story. A gentleman was reading his morning newspaper with a cup of coffee beside him and just relaxing. His eight, nine year old boy said, Daddy, you promised me a bat last week and you did not get me a cricket bat. And his dad said, sorry, son, tomorrow, Monday morning, the first job I'm doing is getting you a cricket bat. And the little boy said, Dad, today I have a cricket match. And I, I have boasted in front of my friends that today I'm coming with my own bat. And for an eight-year-old boy to carry his own bat in a cricket match is like a pride. And uh, the father said, son, I'm sorry. And the son like started crying, harassing his father. And the father said, like, I need to engage him somewhere so that he doesn't keep on harassing me and I can read my newspaper. So he just was looking around and he saw an A4 size paper and there was a world map printed on it and he picked it up and showed it to the little boy and said, see, this is the world map, okay? See it well. And uh, this is where is India and this is where is China and this is where it is Russia and this is where it is Ukraine at the moment. And then here is England, UK and this is America and this is Latin America. <laughs> so like, you read it well, then I'll tear it into small pieces, shuffle it out, and then give it to you. You have to come back to me, you take your time, with the whole world map well arranged. And the little boy picked up the challenge. And if you do it 
Today, I'll get you a bet right away. Because dad knew that an eight-year-old boy, he has never studied geography. He's just standard second, third. At least he has never seen a world map. So like, his father got relaxed, the boy went. And within 10 minutes, he came back. And finds, stick with cello tape, and gave the paper in his father's hand, dad, I did the job. And the dad saw it. Oh, yeah, fine. The whole world, the whole world map is well arranged. How did you do it? I was doing right in front of you, Dad. Dad said, yes, I know. You didn't take anybody's help. You didn't see a map. How did you do it? And little boy, with a broad smile on his face, just took away the paper from his father's hand, turned it around and said, Sir, Daddy, behind this world map was a picture of a man standing. I adjusted the man and the world got adjusted on the other side. I did not go to adjust the world. I just adjusted myself. This is the motto. This is the principle, teaching, preaching, whatever you feel like, whatever you think of. It's for today's session. <clears throat> Arrange yourself well and your world will get arranged. In terms of thought processes, in terms of attitudes, in terms of behaviors, in terms of expressions, and last but not the least, in terms of relationships with people. Arrange yourself well, and your world will get arranged. When it comes to human relations, I'll teach you a very good mantra that you can always be successful in human relations with your friends, with your neighbors, with your relatives, with your working colleagues, with your spouse, everybody. The last one has to be taught very <clears throat> in any relationship, always ask yourself, what can I give? Before you meet a person, before a meeting, which is arranged one or a casual one, ask yourself, in today's meeting with this person, I want to give something to this person. Hum kya soch ke jate hai? Aaj kya profit leke aayenge? Ya human relations bigar jate hai. You don't carry that aura. You will carry a thinking of your project. I have this real estate project and I will do this and this is the facing and C facing and the height of the ceiling is a fit normal. These are all criteria. Ha, you have to talk of this. But first tell yourself, I want to make that person happy. I want to give him something. I want to see that after purchasing the flat that I've gone to sell them, that their family becomes a happy family in that home. Tell yourself 10 times before meeting your client and see the result. I challenge and guarantee. Otherwise, you will just carry the ideas of selling something to a person with these emotions in your heart. Apart from ideas, you will carry an aura. You will carry a persona in and around you that vibes, that atmosphere will touch the hearts of your clients. This aura within will arrange your words. This aura and this persona in and around will make you more presentable. We all want to be more presentable, isn't it? For that, your emotions count well. Because by all your acts, you can hide your facial expressions and body language. Never the expressions of your eyes. Eyes are the reflection of the heart. Whatever is inside will come out. So now in top class B schools across Europe and America, they teach eye reading instead of face reading or body language reading, eye reading. That when you're talking to your client, you have the best facial expressions and broad smiles and presentable your body languages. But if there is something within you that today this guy seems gullible, I can sell something at a higher price. If that is within you, it will reflect in your eyes. I'm going into the finer points because I've read more than 500 biographies and autobiographies of successful people. All of them 
had this thing common in them. They carried an aura which, because of which they could sell their ideas, their ideologies and products. And behind that aura, the secret was they had a clear heart that he is not just my client and I'm not here to just sell a product. I'm here to make him happy. I want to see his family happy. And living in this apartment or a flat that I sell him, I wish and pray that he grows as a professional. He grows as a human being. Ye prasana karke aap jaye and see the results. This has been the experience of n number of professionals, of n number of social workers all over the world in varied fields. So my number one point in keeping human relations with people, go to people with a clean heart. Go to people with a sense of giving. Go to people that I want to make him happy today. If the deal goes, I want to make him happy today. And no pillow is as soft as a clear conscience. You have a clear conscience that I have not cheated anybody. That is the softest pillow to put your head on your bed at night and have a deep sleep. Because ethics play an important role. Norms and disciplines, they play a very important role. The markets are open. Everybody has access to internet, that is the information highway. Everything is visible on the screen with three or four clicks. So now nobody with less on quality, I'm using this word, nobody with less on quality can sell their products for longer time. As simple as that. More and more love for ethics. So, no, so on, in a lighter tone, when I talk to professionals, I tell them, you must marry twice in your life. Everybody must marry twice. Of course, one with your spouse and second with ethics in life. Marry with ethics. When you are ethically right, you will be well accepted by people. You will not have to advertise for yourselves. See, certain brand names in the country or outside the country, they are so well trusted that when that name comes, nobody has a second thought. Isn't it? Am I right or wrong? It takes decades and decades of inputs of all kinds of resources into that brand name to lift it to that level. And certain names are such that, that just when they strike your mind, your mood falls by 30%. So to build a brand or build a name, you have to build your personal brand first. That is ethics. So my point number two when it comes to human relationships is love for ethics. Tell yourself every day in the morning, I cannot do anything wrong. Because our scriptures have taught us, Vayam Amrutasya Putraha, I am the child of God. We are children of God. Because my father, my mother is God, I have to live up to that dignity. As a human being, I am expected to live up to that dignity, to be ethically right, to be honest. To be honest and to be ethically right is not just a human duty. It's not just a human endeavor. It's a human dignity. Take it as a dignity. Today I cannot do anything wrong. Tell yourself every day in the morning. And thus I cannot do anything wrong in my life. And if you do wrong, a couple of wrongs, three, four, five times, like it's like the uh, traffic lights on the crossroads. You may break it once or twice, but third time you might get caught, isn't it? You'll be fine. <laughs> once there was a meeting of transport ministers of all the country in Geneva. It's a real incident. Eh? So one of the sessions was like, you know, how to manage traffics during peak hours in big cities. So everybody were like were presenting their type or like their ideas put forward or their system or structure put forward for this. The transport minister of Italy, he came forward on the dais and said, see, in Rome, the principal city of Italy, 
we have wonderful traffic management just because the people of rome they feel that these are instructions and that is an instruction you have to follow but in our number 2 city that is naples is like a bit half hazard 50 50 because the people of naples have an attitude that this traffic light is a suggestion and suggestions are not always 100% followed and in our city sicily which is a mafia city in italy in sicily nobody follows the traffic light the traffic is 100% half hazard because the people of sicily they have an attitude that these are christmas decorations <laughs> red ember green green ember red is all traffic is lot christian christmas decorations so in rome it is instructions in naples it is suggestions in sicily it is christmas decoration my point number 3 is this your attitude towards people towards system actually brings the final result your attitude plays a very important role how you perceive things how you perceive happenings in life what happens with you is 10% how you take it is 90% i again suggest a very good book for all you young professionals the title of the book is attitude is everything by jeff keller because until the 90s it was like believed and actually seen in the society that those people with resources could do something and produce results after the 90s they came to know and they could actually see in the society that sometimes people with lesser resources money wise status wise family backgrounds platforms academics know hows networks even they were performing and some of them were outclassing or outperforming people with resources especially in the younger generation and today among the top 100 dollar billionaires upon this earth 72 are such that they don't have a powerful family background platform or any kind of resources from bill gates to jeff bezos to larry page everybody this three coming together can buy your entire industry you know this three if they come together and they sign a check they can buy the real estate industry of mumbai larry page jeff bezos and bill gates <laughs> what i mean to say is they are all self made people from zero and scratch so after the 90s it was seen in the markets that why sometimes people with lesser resources they perform to this class and they could outperform and outclass people having resources and legacies isn't it it was a question in people's mind that how can an ordinary person driving an auto on the streets can outclass a legacy that was a question in people's mind that was after the 90s so they had a deep research on this jeff keller researched for 14 years met more than 3000 successful people and met more than 5000 less successful people and met more than 10000 failures interviewed them so it was a very good homework diversified and he comes to a conclusion that whether you have resources or not lesser or more what counts more is your attitude in life attitude towards work attitude towards people attitude towards circumstances and happenings that counts more in your success than your resources that this was an amazing discovery that attitude is the factor which plays the bigger role in your life for success than all the resources that you possess as simple as that this we saw in the life of our guru pramukh swami maharaj i come from the baps swami narayan sanstha which is one of the largest ngos of the world we are among the top 10 ngos of the world 
We have got a permanent status in the United Nations as an NGO. Every Friday, our representative sits there in the United Nations. How many of you have been to Swaminarayan Akshardham at New Delhi or Ahmedabad? Just raise your hands, like all of you. I come from that organization. Talking of your field, and talking of the, the subtopic that I'm talking, that attitude makes a difference. Pramukh Swami Maharaj was just fifth standard pass from a very ordinary village near Vadodara in Gujarat. But in the year 2000, Guinness Book of World Records wrote for him that he is the master builder of the 20th century. So you all are builders and developers. Pramukh Swami Maharaj is the master builder of the 20th century. Why? Now carefully listen to few statistics that I put forward. Pramukh Swami Maharaj in a span of 45 years, from 1971 to 2016, in a span of 45 years, he acquired or got 1,300 lands, did 1,300 projects on it, successfully completed all legal and all running for the benefit of the society, either a hospital, hostel, school, college, community center, Sanskar Kendra, Mandir, or Akshardham. 1,300 projects on 1,300 lands. आप कोई बिल्डर या डेवलपर का नाम जानते हैं मुंबई में नहीं भारत में भी कोई बिल्डर डेवलपर का नाम जानते हैं जिन्होंने फॉरगेट 1300 प्रोजेक्ट्स तो इम्पॉसिबल है लेकिन 1300 जमीन पे सिर्फ पांव रखा हो कि शायद ये जमीन मिल जाए तो मैं कुछ करूं ये भावना से पैर रखा हो ऐसा भी कोई मिले तो मुझे बताना मुझे उनको मिलना है मनोज भाई बात बरोबर करी 1300 projects on 1300 lands is and so Guinness Book of World Record writes that he is the master builder of the 20th century. And see the amazing speed that he did projects with. We got the 110 acres of land on the banks of Yamuna in Delhi in the year 2000. When Pramukh Swami Maharaj's age was 80 years, he started the project at the age of 80. And it was an absolute non-commercial, non-residential project. Aapki tarah baan ke bechna nahi tha. Sale nahi karna tha. Second, it was, it, it was not an RCC project. It was a stone project. Pathar ka kaam tha. RCC ka nahi. Ki every 7th, 8th or 10th day you can take a slab. Ye wo nahi tha. A stone project. At the peak, 4,500 artisans were working. The logistics, stones from Rajasthan go to Delhi, go to the surrounding 26 sites, cowed by the artisans, sent to Delhi, and they have, the whole project comes up. He told the Sompuras. The Sompuras are the, Sompuras are the basic designers of these stone monuments. Modern architecture doesn't help here. This all goes according to the Silp Shastra and the Vastu Shastra. He said that I want to complete in five years. And the Sompura said, Swami, the scale of the project is such, you will need 35 years. Because you will not get more than 2,000 artisans to work for you. Maximum is 1,000 or 12. If you want to complete it in five years, you will need more than 5,000 artisans. And we don't have it in India. Pramukh Swami Mara said, see now how attitude works in being successful in life. Pramukh Swami said, that part you leave it to me. You design our project in the way that we want to complete it in five years. Now see what Pramukh Swami Mara did. He asked all our, all our saints and the volunteers of BAPS that you go into the deep rural areas of Rajasthan and Orissa, where these artisans people they live. Many of them who have not got such work of carving since last many years, they might have started a shop in their village, a tea stall, something. But they have it in their blood. So gather them, give them training from the artisans who are actually working. We will spend, now this is the word. 
we will spend on their training and we spend on their training pramukh swami maharaj words bale patthar thodo sarvatma bagde pan ene training aapo apne 5000 karigaro bhega karva chhe just fifth standard pass the scale of the project the aim of doing it in 5 years and we gathered them from rajasthan norissa trained them we got the workforce and in 2005 as per his wish pramukh sai maharaj inaugurated this swami nanak shardham in delhi in the in the october of 2005 he did it he completed it in 5 years and when he inaugurated it when he inaugurated it the the then prime minister manmohan singh was sitting beside him the then president dr ap j abdul kalam was on his left the then opposition leader lk advani was there the ex lieutenant governor of delhi mr vijay kapoor was there and 160 countries live telecast the opening of the grand swami nakshardham in delhi and pramukh swami maharaj from the bottom of his heart says that we have not done this as a competition with anybody we have not done this to show ourselves bigger in comparison with anybody we have not done this to outclass any monument we have done this absolutely out of our devotion to bhagwan swami narayan out of our wish to fulfill the pledge of our guru yogi ji maharaj and out of a selfless zeal to give something from thoughts to character everybody who visits this place see as i said at the start of my lecture purity of your inner self counts today's generation sorry to say we bank more upon our minds upon thoughts and logics and less on our emotions it is actually both of them going hand in hand for success as an individual success as an organization you believe it or not but this is a fact i will outclass him in the meeting i will supersede my ideas in the meeting i will enforce my thought मैं उसका आइडिया गलत करके साबित कर दूंगा और मेरा आइडिया सर्वोपरि अच्छा साबित कर दूंगा ये भावना से मीटिंग में मत जाना ये भावना से जाना कि सबको सुनूंगा अगर उसकी बात मुझे अच्छी लगी तो मैं अपना आइडिया छोड़ दूंगा ये भावना लेके एक बार तो मीटिंग में जाइए अटीट्यूड और कुछ हो जाएगा एंड सी द रिजल्ट now this finer things are not just like because i am a person from a background of spirituality that i am talking to you top class management gurus og mandino ken blanchard anthony robbins robin smith stephen covey everybody are teaching this to top class executives of fortune 500 companies attitude of pramukh swami maharaj towards work and people that created this project in 5 years so when he inaugurated the project he was 85 years old Two years hence, in 2007, when he was 87, he decided to build Akshar Dam in America. We got 265 acres of land in Robbinsville, New Jersey. He started the project there at the age of 87, and in the year 2024 August, we will inaugurate it. Our Guru Hari Mohan Singh Maharaj will inaugurate it on 265 acres. You have seen Delhi. You have seen Gandhi Nagar. Gandhi Nagar Akshar Dam is a textbook. Delhi Akshar Dam is an encyclopedia. America Akshar Dam will be a library. <laughs> is that scale? See your attitude and cleaner inner self. How it helps? When the Sheikh of Abu Dhabi, His Royal Highness Sheikh Zayed, when he came to know that BAPS, this activities, he gifted us. 27 acres of land on Dubai Abu Dhabi Expressway, the Sheikh Zayed Expressway, first time in the history of planet. First time in the history of this planet that a king of the Middle East, with a whole heart, with a big heart, gives such a big piece of land to a Hindu organization, and he gifted it. and there we are coming up with this project it is already out of from the foundational level atul knows it better he is visiting there regularly it has come out from the foundation level and we intend to inaugurate that project which is an akshardham class project in february 
So February 2024 will be Abu Dhabi and August 2024, six months hence, it will be Akshardham in America. Again, Pramukh Swami was just fifth standard pass. And such 1300 small and big projects. And you have a tension in the morning that still I'm supposed to sell these three flats and my deadline is over. <laughs> With an attitude of giving, you will prosper. With an attitude of helping, there will be an aura and divinity working for you. Make that work for you. You want your secretary to work for you? Yes. You want your academics to work for you? Yes. You want your experience to work for you? Yes. You want your social connectivity with people to work for you? Yes. You want the knowledge of your field to work for you? Yes. Why are you not allowing emotions, aura, persona, spirituality and divinity to work for you? You are missing out a big help. You are missing out a big support to be successful in life. So when your attitude is right, you scale heights. Another good aspect of life is that when you want to succeed, when you want to grow, one of the important factors that affect it well is your determination to do it is your applied commitment. Now I'm using this word. I'm using the word commitment with an adjective. Applied commitment. Sometimes sitting on the sofa, you have a lot of commitments in your mind. <laughs> and when you actually go on the field the next day morning at 10, that drips down. Applied commitment. And the third factor is, in the, as a subset to this is, giving your 100% to your job. You know in the year 2020, when India toured Australia, in the first test match, in the first innings, India got all out for 36 runs. We had the all class, Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, so, Virat and everybody were. The whole class A team thi. Whole team bundled out for 36. And we lost the first test. It was a four test series. It was a four test series. Eventually India won the series 2-1. Virat had to come back for social reasons. So Ajinkya was there. But then we won the series 2-1. We could have won it 3-1. Just the third test match had we got like 10 overs more. Deep analysis by cricket experts, they said, what made India team bounce back into the game after a 36 all-out first innings? Anybody would fall back. Anybody would go into a state of depression, isn't it? What is 36 all out in a test match? Deep analysis said that they, in the team meeting, decided to give their 100% to their job. Second, they believed in applied commitment. And third, they made a determination to win the test series. So your attitude towards happenings, this 36 all out was a happening. Your attitude that you build up, the attitude that you show in such circumstances happenings actually builds you, actually gives you enough energy to bounce back. When Sachin Tendulkar was playing his first test match, he toured India to Pakistan. It was his first international appearance and he was facing the likes of Top class international bowlers, Imran Khan, Vasi Makram, Vakar Yunus. The, the pace and the swing was regularly beating Sachin. 
He was there at the crease for like more than 45 minutes. He scored just 15. He fell. But he was bitten and the more of times by the pace and the swing of these world-class ballers. While walking back, Sachin has written all this in his autobiography. While walking back, he had almost decided never again come on the international arena. He said that this is not my cup of tea. I will play domestic cricket because cricket is my blood and my heart. So I'll play domestic cricket, but never I'll go on the international stage. This pace and this swing, I cannot face. And we sitting in front of the TV, we just make comments. <laughs> when Virat or Rohit Sharma, they slash an outside the off stump delivery, we said uh, the ball was all pitched outside the off stump. It was an out swinging delivery. It was way away from the body. Why would Virat or Rohit go to slash there? Away from his body, playing three feet away, connecting, trying to connect three feet away from his body. Naturally, it will be a light cut in the first or the second slip or behind the wickets. Itna to mujhe bhi pata chalta hai, yaar, ye delivery ko chhod deni chahiye. Ye hum kahan comment karte hain? TV ke saamne baat ke, arm chair mein, AC room mein. But do you know what is 96 and 98 miles per hour deliveries? Hum sab cricket khil ke bade huye hain. Lekin hum mein se kisi ne 96 miles per hour ke delivery face nahi ki hai. And that too swinging deliveries, cutting deliveries. Wo kya hoti hai, wo pata nahi hai. And you start commenting. Because into bracket, every Indian is a philosopher. <laughs> we have an attitude of making opinions in the fields and about people where we are least experienced. This film, this actor has not done acting. So, tomorrow you will be able to Virat Rohit Sharma ne thik nahi khela, to tujhe bech denge. Tujhe aata hai na, tujhe bech denge. We have to improve on our attitudes towards happenings in life. So Sachin decided that this is not my cup of tea. I'll play domestic cricket. I'll not go in the international arena. He came back to the dressing room, offices, gloves and pads, straight away went into the washroom and almost cried in front of the mirror. That bhai sahab, agar ye log mujhe aaj chhod de, to aaj raat ki flight mein wapas Mumbai chala jao. Agar ye log mujhe chhod de to. Yahan tak aa gaye the ve. When he came out of the, wash, of the washroom, Ravi Shastri as coach was sitting there in the balcony watching the play. Ravi Shastri ke baju mein ja ke khade rahe. Ravi Shastri told him, sit here. Coach ne baju pe bitha kyunki from his facial expressions and body language, Ravi Shastri came to know that he has, filled, he has like felt depressed or dejected. Then Ravi Shastri tells him, See, I saw your entire game. You were like playing a school match. You wanted to hit every ball. This is international cricket. You have to respect the bowlers. As you have an art of batting, they have an art of bowling. You can't strike every ball. You can't run, or rather score on every ball. Some delivers you have to live because they are class deliveries. Sometimes you have to defend yourself. You can't attack. You are trying to play each and every delivery like it was a school cricket. Then he gave the second advice. See, in international cricket, for the first 20 minutes, don't look at the scoreboard. Very important advice for you all as well. Eh? When you launch a project or decided to sell, decide to sell a project in the market, maybe for the first 20 days you don't look at the scoreboard. <laughs> don't look at the scoreboard, just try to stick yourself at the crease, have a good view of the fielding, try to gauge and judge the line and length, try to gauge the nature of the pitch. First 20 minutes is for that. And then when you are well set, try to score. Patience. Sachin well accepted the advice, applied it, applied commitment. Applied it in the next match at Faisalabad. He scored a wonderful 59, that is half century, and cemented his place in the playing 11 for another more than 20 years. So happenings are there in life, which may bring you dejection or depression. But the attitude that you have to 
learn from such people, from such performers, such achievers, such successful people in all walks of life. I talked of Pramukh Sahib Maharaj, I talked of Sachin Tendulkar. That you have to keep your attitudes positive, high and pious. Sometimes we keep positive, sometimes we keep high as well. But to keep the attitudes pious, that will create the aura within you. Otherwise, why you commercial people will call a person like me from an NGO? You know that I have never worked like you people. Because your working and our working is completely different. You in a commercial and a corporate setup, your working system is pay and smile. <laughs> pay and smile. Your employees like your pay, so there is a smile on their face. You like your employees work, so there is a smile on your face. He is paying you by work, you are paying them by money. So it's called a pay and smile relationship. The moment he doesn't like your pay or gets a better pay, just next door he will... He will... Go and smile there. Simple. And the moment you don't like his work, you will force him to go and smile somewhere. In NGOs we work, it is not pay and smile relationship because money is not involved. We don't have bank accounts. We as saints of BOPS, we don't have bank accounts. We don't touch money. We don't keep money. We in NGOs, we work serve and smile relationship. You have to serve and smile. I've not touched money. I've not kept money. I don't have bank accounts. It's the same clothes I've been wearing since 30 years. The same color, the same style. Still, you can see any lesser smile on my face than yours. Serve and smile relationship. You serve and have a smile on your face. So it is entirely different. Still, you all gathered and called me for what reason? The reason that I'm putting forward is develop your inner self well to develop your outer self. It plays a principal role. If your industry is good in your industry, then you buy it or construction is good, then you buy it. अच्छा क्या होना चाहिए? फिर कभी-कभी वीडियो निकलती हैं कि वो दीवाल को तोड़ा तो अंदर तो कुछ कंक्रीट था ही नहीं। एक वीडियो घूम रही थी पता है पांच सात साल पहले। पंच मारा है। तो it was a box inside। The punch, the fist went in। You don't buy properties from the color that you see. They may be attractive. You see the structure. You see the legalities of it. Everything. That means you are seeing something of the inner side, then the outer side. What is the color of apple? Why are you confused? Have you not seen an apple? <laughs> Have you not eaten an apple? Green is the color of apple, yes. Who said that? Yes, fine. What is the color of apple? Red is the color of apple. Still you have something to answer. Have you ever seen a white apple? I haven't seen. If you have seen, then show me. Color of apple. Sometimes golden as well. The moment you feel that the color of apple is white, because 90% of apple is white, just 10% is either red, green, or golden, you will have the attitude of seeing something of the inner self and not the outer one. So white is the color of apple. I strongly believe that the color of apple is white. I strongly believe that the color of apple is white. Why? Because 90% of apple is white and just 10% the outer skin is green or red or golden. Second more important point than that, what is inside counts more than what is outside. When I talk to students, for example, I tell them that your academics, your talents, your know-hows, your platforms, your experiences will make you grow to a certain level. Beyond that level, only your values will make you grow. If two people in organization, they join the organization at the same time, both are equally qualified, equal experience, they grow at the same level, a time will come when there is only one position and either of the two has to be promoted. Then the board of directors will take a decision absolutely and solely based on values and not on any other qualification. Absolutely on values and not on any other qualification. 
So time comes when decisions are made on values and not on talents or experiences or know-hows. Do you get it clearly and do you accept this or not? Yes, yes or no? A time comes in an organization where decisions are made absolutely on values. That is where the value part will play its role. So as much amount of time that you are spending to know the know-hows of your industry, you must spend equal amount of time in developing the values as a human being in yourself. Because that will develop your character. It is a combination of personality and character that gives result. Personalities, branded clothes and branded items and you know, branded vehicles and everything. This is all personality. That can initially shine you. But ultimately after, talk, after, ultimately after talking with you or after knowing you or after dealing with you, when your character comes out, if it is, if it is at crossroads with your personality, you will not be then well accepted in the market or your social circles or even in your business circles. All the great personalities of the world, they have banked more upon their character than their personalities. Personalities and outer shine, they go on the silver screen. And character and inner shine goes in the pages of history to inspire people through generations. To inspire people through generations. Once a small boy was on the seashore, on the beach, and uh, he saw a man selling balloons. So the little boy got attracted and ran up there. And other little children, boys and girls were like buying some, their parents were buying balloons for them. So this boy felt that I must also have a balloon. So he ran up to his dad and said, dad, I want a balloon. And dad said, okay. So they walked up to that place. And then he saw all the other children, somebody getting a black balloon, uh, somebody getting a red and somebody white and somebody green. The little boy said that uh, to the seller, that even this black balloon goes up or just all these other color balloons, if they are like, no, put in the air, they go up. He said, even the black balloon goes up. And then the seller says, my little boy, the balloon doesn't go up in the air because of its color. The balloon goes up in the air because what is inside it. Same applies to human being. What really applies and what really matters is your inner self. Again, I suggest a third book. Spiritual Intelligence, The Ultimate Intelligence. The title of the book is Spiritual Intelligence, The Ultimate Intelligence, written by Ian Marshall and co-authored by Dr. Dana Zohar. Both of them have written this book wonderfully after perhaps interviewing more than 5,000 people all over the world in which they list out eight qualities that a person should develop to become spiritually intelligent. And they confidently say, and it is in the experience of all professionals of top class, that after your IQ, after your EQ, what matters is your SQ. People with IQ can perform and can lead and can produce results. But you know in the Silicon Valley, all the IQ people are paid by people who are lesser in IQ than them. IT companies ke jo malik hai, wo log IT ke engineers jitne padhe nahi hai. Because, haan, the man of them are dropouts, like Bill Gates himself. So like, they have high EQ, emotional intelligence. That is, they know the feelings, the inside of the other person, they know the inside of their selves as well, and how well to connect. So when Dr. G.S. Sainani, one of the leading cardiologists in Mumbai, he came to our Swaminan Akshardham in Gandhi Nagar and met Pramukh Sai Maharaj, he saw Pramukh Swami Maharaj meeting people and said that, uh, Swamiji, we physicians, we have six senses. Jeev Prani Matra ko paach sense hoti hai, Shabda, Sparsh, Rupras, or Gand. We have six senses. But even my, that is my sixth sense as physician could pick up the, the inner self of a person while meeting. But even my sixth sense could not pick up the love, the compassion, the pity with which Pramukh Swami Maharaj meets people. So EQ scores over IQ, emotional intelligence. But SQ, spiritual quotient, scores over IQ and EQ both. Spiritual quotient in this book, spiritual intelligence, the ultimate intelligence, they list out eight qualities. I'm not going into details of it. My time is almost over. Just I listed out the eight qualities. First is flexibility. 
This is the positivity that you need during times of adversity. Positivity in times of adversity, the first quality is flexibility to change. Harvard University defines intelligence as flexibility to change is intelligence. Coming to a CMP, common minimum program, as fast as possible during a meeting or during a deal is flexibility and intelligence. Coming to a CMP as fast as possible during a meeting across the table. Flexibility to change. First is flexibility. Second is self-awareness. What I'm doing, what I'm talking, what I'm looking at, how am I expressing myself, what can be the repercussions of what I say, what I do, how I can engage myself with this group, with this person, with this organization. Extremely self-aware. So you never make a public or a private mistake in your life. Extremely self-aware. Third spiritual quality is an ability to face and use the suffering of life. We all face the suffering of life, but spiritual intelligent person, he can use the suffering of life. Like the top guy in the country, the top person in the country today has this knack of using the suffering. Anybody throws anything at him, he can turn it into a giant wood bank. That needs a neck. That needs a big neck. And everybody as a professional needs to learn that knack. That people may throw anything at you, any garbage at you. You don't go to fight with people. As mom, as, as silent as nothing has happened in the last 48 hours. <laughs> he is mum and silent as nothing has happened. It's a routine in the country. It's a knack. It needs tremendous spiritual maturity to lead from that level and what to do, what not to do, what to talk, whether to express, give an opinion, comment or not. During such happenings, it needs tremendous balance of mind, tremendous spiritual maturity. That is called an ability to face and use the suffering of life. Fourth is an ability to be inspired by vision. Fifth is an ability to cause as little harm as possible. Sixth is an ability to see connection between diverse things which are 180 degree opposite. You can still see a connection. That means if you decide you can sell a refrigerator to an Eskimo. <laughs> you can sell a comb to a bald person. You can see a connection between 180 degree diagonally opposite things. That is the sixth quality. Seventh is the seventh and the eighth both I love very much. The seventh is an ability to probe and ask fundamental questions. Koi hakikat se aap anjaan ho, to go right into the deep. Don't feel like, you. Oh, what would he think of me that I'm in this profession since 20 years and I don't know certain basics of this project. If you are unaware, ask it like a child. But get fully informed, only then start to perform. As simple as that. So probe and ask fundamental questions and the eighth is to work against a convention. You have the determination and applied commitment to work against a convention. Ek manyata, ek dhancha ke virud ja ke bhi kaam karna hai aur karke dikhayenge. That will power and confidence. That helps a lot. So these are the eight qualities of a spiritually enlightened person and vice versa. If you have these eight qualities, you are a spiritually intelligent person. So raise your IQ, raise your EQ, but be equally vigilant, careful and enthusiastic to raise your SQ as well, the spiritual quotient. That will supersede IQ and EQ and give you better results. That you can see in the life of many personalities who have led from the front in various fields in the past, today, and it is an absolute principle, a fundamental one for the future as well. And the last thing I want to say is, always keep the element of faith in the divinity within yourself. This is not just because I am a spiritual person. I have both the backgrounds, okay? I am a man of science and a man of spirituality both. I did my engineering way back in 1991, I finished it. So thereafter I was saying, so I'm a man of science and a man of spirituality both. So I'm talking with the combination of it.
keep the element of faith in divinity in yourself it will help you practically forget the heavens i am not talking about the heavens at the moment what i am talking is how can spirituality faith in god help you practically in your day to day life that is more important because this is the age of cash and carry this is the age of cash and carry so how prayers or chanting the holy name helps you daily in your affairs in 1972 idi i mean drove out all the asians indians and gujaratis from uganda many of them came back to india many of them had british passports because uganda was a british colony and they went to london many of them were millionaires in uganda had a 6 8 bedroom house and 15 20 african locals working as domestic help and drivers and everything and 72 hours hence they were like selling newspapers as vendors on the streets of london imagine the shock and the fall you can imagine the shock and the fall like you are a millionaire in a country 3 days back and 3 days hence in a absolutely new country to a new place you are just on the streets they definitely felt it a bit of dejection and depression but a leading british historian charles cunningham wanted to do a research on this that why nobody especially the gujaratis why none of them none of them are committing any suicide or like in a sense of desperation coming out with some violent behavior he surveyed 3000 of them and he writes this book charles cunningham writes this book that this people definitely had a sense of depression and dejection because of this happening in their life but they believed that whatever was with us in uganda materialistically was with the grace of god definitely we worked for it we worked hard for it but it was god's grace then after what happened that we were driven out of uganda that was also a happening with the permission of god and today we are in london with the wish of god and if we still work after 5 7 10 years we'll again grow so whatever happened in my life whatever is happening and whatever will happen happens with the wish of god happens for my good and if i keep that attitude happens for my progress this is the ultimate attitude of positivity in adversity aap sabhi ko anubhav honge do prakar ke ek mahine tak do mahine tak teen mahine tak ek bhi flat nahi bika yes or no aur ek hafte mein panch bech diye to kabhi is pe socha hai कि मैं वही हूं यार सेल्स वाला मैं वही सेल्स एग्जीक्यूटिव हूं तो तीन महीने तक कुछ नहीं बिका और एक हफ्ते में पांच बिक गया तो अगर आपको घमंड है घमंड तो सबका उतर जाता है अगर आपको घमंड है तो आप ही थे तो क्यों रिजल्ट नहीं ला पाए और यहां क्यों रिजल्ट आया डेफिनेटली योर वर्क हैज पेड definitely your human relations has paid but above all the timing was decided by the divinity you all have an experience now listen i will ask you two questions and all of you will say yes none of you will be able to say no to the as an answer to this question i challenge and guarantee question number 1 we all, all have an experience that, that sometimes we planned well executed well still we did not get the desired results yes or no second question sometimes because of time constraints or human resources constraints sometimes we had less on planning less on execution less on team work still we got results beyond our imaginations isn't it yes. have you ever given a thought to this nahi diya hai isliye ye depth pe hum life mein nahi ja sakte hain ki why this is happening sometimes best of resources less results sometimes list of resources best results shrimad bhagavad gita mein bhagwan sri krishna ne kaha hai karmanya vadikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana he tells arjun and thus all of us your job is to perform your duty well results i will decide very clear very clear god has said this God has said this to every human being your job is to perform your duty well to the best of resources that you have perform it final outcomes i will decide according to your destiny according to your past karmas according to the type of attitudes and emotions that you savored during the time of your meetings cheating ka bhav andar tha to maine us result nahi diya client theek tha client 
को आप बेच सकते थे लेकिन चीटिंग का भाव थोड़ा आ गया क्योंकि फाइव मिनट्स इन द कॉन्वर्सेशन अक्रॉस द टेबल यू फेल यू फेल दैट इज गली बल इंस्टेड ऑफ टू पॉइंट ट्वेंटी एट आई कैन सेल इम फॉर टू पॉइंट थर्टी फाइव ये जो भाव आया ना इसलिए भगवान ने वो डील रोक दी ये सभी कुछ काम करता है ये समझना दैट इज अमन एंड ये समझ के उस मुताबिक वर्तन रखना दैट इज अमन डिग्निटी तो दिस इज हाउ यू कीप अ पॉजिटिविटी इन लाइफ एंड आई टीच द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ फोर्टी थर्टी ट्वेंटी एंड टेन ये ध्यान से सुन लेना All my readings, Niranjan Bai. All my readings, all my travels, all my meeting people, and all my exposure with people on various platforms, I have made a formula, and that formula is 40, 30, 20, 10. 10. Totally, it makes 100. 40, 30, 20, 10, it makes 100. What is that formula? Now listen carefully, and I'll end with this. Of all the work that you have decided in your life, and all the relationships that you have started in your life. 40 परसेंट विल गो योर वे आनंद कर लो मजा कर लो ऑल द वर्क दैट यू डिसाइडेड टू डू एंड ऑल द रिलेशन दैट यू स्टार्ट इन योर लाइफ थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ इट विल डिमांड एक्स्ट्रा मेंटेनेंस टू कंप्लीट इट और कंटिन्यू इट प्रोजेक्ट में होता है ना इनिशियल प्लानिंग किया था उससे जरा मेंटेनेंस उससे जरा ज्यादा रिसोर्सेस मनी अंदर डालने पड़े ये वो कुछ प्रॉब्लम आ गया so 30% of all your works and relationships demand extra maintenance beyond your initial planning that comes to how many percentage 70 now 20% of all the work that you have decided and the relationships that you have found are bound to get spoiled accept it tension kahan aata hai maine planning kiya tha ये रिलेशनशिप में मैंने मेरा सब कुछ दे दिया था फिर भी क्यों नहीं चला नहीं चला अब क्या करना है बोल 20% परसेंट ऑफ ऑल योर वर्क 20% परसेंट ऑफ ऑल योर रिलेशनशिप आर बाउंड टू गेट स्पॉल्ड दिस इज अ यूनिवर्सल फैक्ट विथ सेवन बिलियन पॉपुलेशन and in future when it is well scrutinized and future when it is well researched it will be a fact in the animals and birds as well because we know you you have seen discovery in wildlife films isn't it the lion doesn't get the prey every time he chases 30% 20% is bound to get spoiled and now how many percent 10 remains now listen this carefully this is the most important statement of this formula 10% of all the work that you decide is bound to bring heavy losses to you maybe in terms of finance maybe in terms of relationships maybe in terms of your health 10% of all the work that you decide in your life are bound to bring heavy losses to you and 10% of all the relationships that you decide in your life are bound to get converted into severe competition or enmity spardha ya dushmanavat jigar jan mitra jani dushman ban jate hain होता है ना आपका पार्टनर जिसको आपने ग्रो किया वो आपका कंप्यूटर बन जाता है कि नहीं सुना है देखा है हैपेंस एंड दिस इज अपनिंग दिस इज अपनिंग विथ सेवन बिलियन पॉपुलेशन दर द स्मॉलेस्ट पर्सन इन योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सुपर सीट्स यू एंड सीट्स ऑन योर सीट इट हैपन्स इट इज अपनिंग ऑफ नेचर हैपनिंग ऑफ अपन दिस प्लान इन एवरी फील्ड so this is the principle of 40 30 20 and 10 the trouble with all of us we want the 30 20 and 10 to be in the 40% bracket every time which is not going to happen i am not discouraging you but i am teaching you something that you need to accept to remain stable and happy <laughs> to remain stable and happy because stability and happiness and peace is counted more and you require more than success in life you increase the turnover of your company from 10 crores to 50 crores or 50 crores to 500 crores it is not success it is just growth let me redefine you the definition of success increasing materialistic possessions is growth is not success 
your ethical values added to your progress, to, to your growth. Norms and disciplines added to your growth becomes your progress because it has a high stability. Your growth has a stability only when you add ethical values to it. Agree or not? And that progress, if it is aided by humanity, morality and spirituality becomes success in life. So success in life is not just materialistic possessions or materialistic gains. It includes ethical behaviors. It includes humanity. It includes morality. It includes spirituality. That is total coming together to become success in life. So more properties that you own doesn't mean that you are successful. Eh? You have just grown. You have not even progressed. So growth, progress and success. Aim for success. That is the ultimate positivity in adversity. So thank you very much. And all my prayers for all of you. I have taken a few like 10-15 minutes more than my time. I beg pardon from all of you. And hope this all gets engraved in our lives. Thank you very much. Uh, Swamiji, thank you very much. Can we have a louder round of applause for Swamiji? Outstanding. <laughs> and I think, Swamiji, when you said that growth, progress, and growth, progress, and success, that was a Thank you very much. Uh, Rajanji, can I please request you to join us on stage? and uh, present Swamiji with a warmest token of appreciation. Yes. Uh, can I request uh, Mr. Manoj Ajmera ji, if you can please. He's the connect, he's... What brings the generation and next generation together? <laughs> it's all connected. Yes, can I request uh, the next gen uh, team to please join us on stage? Team next gen. Can I request uh, our August gathering to please be seated? Thank you.
just take your two minutes uh, for a uh, clarification, for an explanation that uh, it was like when we are meeting and talking, it was a small like uh, a question post that uh, why that is a, a separate seating arrangement for the ladies. And uh, that was a so, sort of like some discussion just before the session when we were sitting all together there. And it is like a holy line of discipline that we follow. It is not any ill feeling or not any grudge or not treating like second class citizens, nothing like that. But it's a holy line of discipline that, fall, that we follow. It is like customary and tradition, like you all, all also follow. For example, when you got married, even when you say that ladies first, you did not give your wife an option that which surname we will carry as a couple. Did you? Now still you have a chance, huh? you can do an affidavit. <laughs> and your wife also never questioned that why are you asking me, or you have never asked, but it is a customary that we as a family or we as a couple will carry the gentleman's last name then nobody can put a finger on your chest and tell you that you are treating your wife as a second class citizen. It's a custom, it's a tradition. Second option, second thing. When you got married, you did not give a, an option to your wife that after marriage, will you walk into my house or I walk into your house? It is always the women after marriage walks into the house of the groom, of the husband, isn't it? She has to leave her house and come to your house. It's a custom. It's not that yeah, you did not give a choice or you, had, you did not give her an option or you're treating her as a second class citizen. It is not that. But it's a custom in the society. It's a tradition in the society. It is not that you are treating your wife as a second class citizen. That sometimes you feel that there is a separate sitting arrangement sometimes. Like, but it is just for two hours. It is just for three hours. It is just for half an hour. But sometimes like, you can say that for a lifetime you changed her middle name and last name. It's not like treating like second class citizen, but it's a holy line of discipline that we follow. And at many of places, this segregation takes place. For example, if a woman is arrested, which happened five days back in Mumbai, three, four days back, the women police go there to arrest her, isn't it? A big name was arrested three, four days back by Gujarat ATS. So the women go to arrest her. At the airport for the security check, there is also segregation, isn't it? That, now remember this line and take this line. It is not gender inequality, it is gender respect. It is gender dignity. Segregation of male and female for security check at the airport. You don't say it is a segregation. It is a gender dignity. In the same way when it is a spiritual session, it is a gender dignity. You have to see it from that point of view. Thank you very much. Swamiji, if correct. So, अगर आपके पास कोई सवाल हैं जो आप Swamiji से पूछना चाहते हैं या तो आप उसे paper भी लिख सकते हैं और you can ask it over the mic as well. But समय को ध्यान में रखते हुए हम सिर्फ दो या तीन सवाल फिलहाल लेंगे. जी. Namaste Swamiji. Swamiji, Namaste. Not orally, whatever you want to ask, write it and send the chip to me. Swamiji, the question is here that uh, you were an engineer by profession and education. Why did you select sainthood over a career or social life? A nice question put forward. Ah, it's fine. It's working. 
so many most of you are and rather all of you are into the real estate real estate industry how many of you have been like a chartered accountant or a pharmacist or a bcom or a ba or a bsc just raise your hands the main person here <laughs> so my question is that after being a chartered accountant why did you select real estate so what i mean to say is that now listen this line very carefully education is not what is taught to you education is that which remains with you after you have forgotten everything that has been taught to you and that is a developed mind <laughs> education is not what is taught to you education is what remains with you after you have forgotten everything that has been taught to you that means remains means a developed mind and that developed mind has the right and the choice to accept the path that it wants to walk on maybe my mind accepted that and second thing at the end of the day whichever path you select in your life you must be happy you must be self satisfied you must be contributing to the society and in some way helping the society and nation build that i am confident i am doing in some way so i am happy and satisfied thank you it is often that expectation levels to upsets expectations lead to upsets so how do we strike a balance between high expectations that might lead to upset or low expectations can lower our performance yeah. both high expectation rakhe to ema success nahi tha main ekdam low expectation kare to pachi apne kya pucha hi nahi ha barabar i'll say two lines remember very carefully that is the shortest answer to this you catch a cricket bat first time in your life definitely you dream of becoming a sachin tendulkar but you don't expect to become a sachin tendulkar dreaming and ex expecting is a two different thing so before starting or rising to a certain level of expectation know your resources well second thing know your attitudes well know the level of energy that you are capable of putting in it you have to take the measure and the gauge of your energy your attitudes your resources only then build up on your expectations aapke paas jeb mein 5000 rupees hain aur bank mein 50 lakh hain to aap 50 crore ka project karne nikloge haaya na fir bolte expectation to maine acha banaya tha मेरा सपना भी बहुत बड़ा था पहुंच नहीं पाया और जो वर्ड यूज किया है क्या डिप्रेशन और लो लोअर ऑन परफॉर्मेंस लोअर ऑन परफॉर्मेंस फिर आ जाते हैं डेफिनेटली सेट अ गोल सेट अ हायर गोल स्ट्राइव फॉर इट बट एट द एंड ऑफ इट हैव एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट आई डिड माय बेस्ट टू जंप एट दैट लेवल येट इफ आई कुड नॉट रीच इट द फाइनल रिजल्ट आई विल एक्सेप्ट बिकॉज इट वॉज the wish of god ye ek line hamesha yaad rakhna to kabhi depression stress nahi aayega kya my job is to perform my duty to the best of resources that i have i will apply everything that i have to get success but at the end of the day whatever i get i will accept it with a smiling face One Mr. Natu Bai Patel in Vallabh Vidya Nagar. He was the general manager with Alikon Engineering Company. He was a well-wisher of the organization. He used to come to meet Pramukh Swami Maharaj every time when Swami Shri was there. Once he said to Pramukh Swami Maharaj that I have seen you during the entire course of the day, doing your morning puja, meeting people, writing letters, talking on telephone, administrative meeting. You'll be surprised to know that Pramukh Swami Maharaj travelled to 18,000 villages and towns in 60 countries of the world. 18,000. He read and personally answered more than 7.5 lakh letters in his lifetime. at an unbelievable average of reading and answering more than 70 letters a day without a sunday for 45 years he met more than 40 lakh that is 4 million people personally interacted with them without any exaggeration from my faithful heart i can tell you that he knew 25000 people by name and face when niranjan bhai's son darshan was supposed to get married his his daughter is his daughter in law is from delhi so his daughter in law the the to be daughter in law she wanted to get married at swaminarayan akshardham in delhi 
So like everybody in the family said, fine, if it's your wish, the young couple's wish, we may do it. So marriage at Swaminarayan Akshardham, which had never happened before. And the talk and the matter happened to reach to Pramukh Swami. Pramukh Swami Maharaj said, ha, enu naam darshan che, e Dr. Hira Nandani na grandfather saathe, manne London ma Hindu jana gare madhe lo, huen olkhu chu, enu lagan karavanu. What a memory at this age. Niranjan bhai barabar na. Niranjan bhai was just narrating that whole incident before this session. That Pramukh Swami Maharaj, when Natu bhai asked him that, Swami, I have seen you in the midst of all this and I tell you, your employee's responsibility on you is again a pay and smart relationship. Or 1200 saints relationship with Pramukh Swami is an emotional relationship. We put full trust on Pramukh Swami Maharaj and Mohan Swami Maharaj and we wore these clothes and we have put our life at his feet. So it's a bigger responsibility than a father and son. The guru and disciple relationship has carries a bigger responsibility than a father and son relationship. That emotional pressure and Natubai says, Swami, I have never seen a wrinkle of tiredness, of fatigue, of depression, of stress, any time on your face. And Pramukh Swami has replied this. I'm concluding my answer with this. And Pramukh Swami said, see, at the start of the day, we decide what to do. We put all our energy and resources to make it happen during daytime. But in the evening, now learn this very well. In the evening, we give it back at the feet of God, praying that I did to the best of my resources today, whatever results you give, you give or not give, I accept it, and you will never need a sleeping pill at night. Uh, there is, uh, I watch uh, Swamiji YouTube sessions, and uh, he gave a different answer in one of the sessions which Swamiji himself said, and the summary, I don't remember the whole lecture, the summary of what he said was, change, the changeable except the unchangeable. That is the second answer. I'm not giving it. Yeah. Swamiji himself said it in one of the lectures which I had watched. That if you can change the changeable, go ahead and do it. But if it cannot be changed except the unchangeable. Yeah. That is what you have mentioned yes, definitely. as a second answer to the same question which you gave on a yes. YouTube channel. Yeah, you are right, you are right. So because everybody, when, is, when he or she stands in front of the mirror, feels that if 10% was okay with my face and my figure and my physic, I would be on the, in the, on the silver screen in Bollywood. Anybody standing in front of the mirror has at least one thought. I'm, I challenge and guarantee you had this thought someday while standing in front of the mirror. That if God had made 10% good here or somewhere, I would be somewhere on the silver screen. But God kept this 10% deficit in you to fill up the theatres, okay? <laughs> so I'm, we are talking of expectation. See, if you have an expectation that is, that is beyond your uh, possibility of change, that uh, Niranjan Bhai said, beyond the things that you can change, accept it. So try to change the things that you can change and things that you cannot change, accept it. But by doing both, basically decide to remain happy. Basically, decide to remain happy. Simple. Thank you. I think that's a lot of joy. We'll accept today. So, thank you very much, all. Thank you, Niran. Thank you. Uh, we would request Swamiji to please uh, felicitate our next gen members to give all your blessings and good wishes to them as well. Let's see. We'll start first. Can we request uh, Amish Dutt to join us on stage? Amish, can you please join us on stage? The next uh, we would invite is Mr. Anirudh Khandelwal. Can we have a round of applause for our next gen uh, members?
order we've kept it in uh, rajan sir can we please request you to join us on stage Mr. Rohan Daisaria. Taliya batti bhi chahiye. They put in extra hard work and they are the future. They are the next gen. Mr. Anuj Ketan. So these are the people that have worked and dedicated uh, the time for. making this day possible mr kapil gulati mr kapil gulati can we request mr amit haure to join us on stage Amitabh Ray. Uh, next, we would request Mr. Raj Gala to please uh, join us on stage. As uh, Mr. Gala is receiving, can we request Mr. Vikas Jain? So we have Mr. Vikas Jain. Next, we would request Mr. Rishab Siroya to join us on stage and collect a trophy. Come on, let's give some energy to the room. Next is Mr. Rhythm Gada. Can we request uh, Ronak Bandelkar to please join us on stage? <laughs> Thank you. Can we have Vishal on stage? Can we request Mr. Pratik to join us? And stage with our Marisa, the Jay, the Hain, Jay Morzaria. Let's give it up for our president, Next Gen. Isi ke saath can we have uh, once again a huge round of applause for Swami Ji for giving us his valuable time and joining us here at Nerit Co. Next Gen Accelerate 1.0. Thank you. वैसे जाइए नहीं, वी वी स्टिल हैव अ फ्यू, वी वुड लाइक टू थैंक अ पार्टनर्स एंड अ क्लोजिंग नोट्स, वी वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू स्टे बैक